Hello everybody, I'm Simon Toastkin, that's Buff Pro, and this is Mary, my lovely wife. And today, Mary is going to teach us about Girl World. She's made this big slide, this big presentation for us to go through and learn all the things that we don't ever know about. Because whenever we talk about these people, there's always people in the comments being like, Ken, you don't know the lore. The 10 years of information that you're missing, you don't have it, and it's just killing me inside that you don't know. So now we're going to know. This is Intro to Girl World, a brief summary by Mary, Ken's hot wife. <laughs> I love that in parentheses. Kids hot wife. That's right. <laughs> also in parentheses by the greatest YouTubers to ever live. That's right. All right, so first off, who are the girls? The girls. I got a question already for Mary. Why is it girls spelt like that? As you can see at the bottom of the slide, fun fact, Amber named the girl world as that's how she pronounces the word girl. It's all there, right in front of me. I, just, I felt like I just asked Mary where like the ketchup was. <laughs> it's like sitting right there in the front of the refrigerator. Yeah. <laughs> all you gotta do is just move one thing. It's like right there. You're like, oh, god dang it! That wasn't there before. I promise. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So who are the girls? You got Amber Lynn Reed. She's the American queen of girl world. She's the queen. Yeah. She's got the crown. She's got the tiara. Right. She's yeah. she's. Well, we know her. We know yeah. her. So yeah. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. Then you got Foodie Beauty, Chantel Marie Al Rafay, Canadian Queen of Girl. She's the Canadian Queen, which is like oh. a more like a a Duchess, you know. <laughs> Sorry, Canada. <laughs> so we got two leaders here. She's the yeah. co-leader. Yeah. The Canadian leader. All right. Then the one that wishes they were the leader, which is Nick Avocado Avocado. Oh, Nick Avocado. Mm, wow. We know him too. Yeah. Hungry Fat Chick slash Candy. Amy and Tammy <laughs> from Thousand Pound Sisters, right? What? Amy and Tammy were one of the original, well, they, the both of them, were the original girls. They started their whole career here on YouTube, and then they were picked up. They took Amberlynn's whole dream, being picked up by TLC, and now they're super famous outside of the girl world. <laughs> Amberlynn Jelly. Amy and Tammy. Okay, all right, all right. And then uh, there's, a, there's also the... the other like channels that are like the lore masters, the girl world professors. Mm -hmm. And this is some of the ones that Mary's listed. I'm sure there's more, but you got like Zachary, Michael, you got, oh, what's it? Apathetic facts, yep. Karina Kaboom, Willow Davis, and then others. There are other people, like there are more people than what I just listed as to who are the girls. So there are other people that these people talk about, but primarily their channels were created to talk about these people. Uh, out, out of these guys, my favorite's obviously a Beast to Beast. You, I've already told you guys how much I love a Beast to Beast. He's fantastic. He doesn't talk about pretty much anyone other than Anne Boleyn and Hungry Fat Chick. Um, out of the girl world, I mean. Although he has talked about Amy and Tammy before. But he does a lot of stuff outside of the girl world. But Zachary Michael, Apathetic Facts, Karina Kaboom, Willow Davis, Alice is Shook, and Mr. Snowflake – that that is their bread and butter. Like the girl world is how they make their living. So they are the experts. I am definitely not a girl world professor. I am just a, a connoisseur. A, a yeah, there we go. A yeah, a connoisseur. <laughs> That's a shout out to all those channels, and then more if you want to. You want to get some more people that that you know get get more juicy and deep into it. So why do we care? A lot of people watch the girl world in the same way they watch reality TV. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But instead of being produced and edited by TLC, girl world content is produced in its very own stars. Each girl has their own show and they have their own audience, the quiet bit overlap, and they all occasionally interact with each other. So I guess that's why they're the girl world because they like kind of, yeah, like, there's they're crossovers. All connected. Yeah. There is a lot of crossover. They're gang gang. The <laughs> gang gang, yeah. <laughs> Uh, there's usually a sleep plot, uh, lots of unexpected twists and turns, funny side characters, and it's usually separate time periods from the girl world into specific eras or shows. In the, you know, the, the whole eras thing is getting on my nerves. Like, this, this is my blah era. Like, <laughs> era. Era, era. I just, I just throw stuff in there and let Otto Craig get me. It's like, what, what is an era? You know, a long and distinct period of history, you know? And I, I guess that makes sense, but like a long, a long that part, people are like, this is my era. They do something for like a week. You know? It's like, shut up. It's just like, it's just like breaking, like people say breaking the internet. Oh, it makes me cringe to my core. Unless you got Comcast. You never know when yeah. you got Comcast. Unless, <laughs> unless you're, unless you're Wreck-It Ralph, you know, then you break the internet literally. <laughs> Life in the girl world tends to move in cycles. And even when things seem to go completely sideways, almost always ends exactly where it began. The endless cycle. 
This predictability makes it easy for the audience to make guesses as to what will happen next. And it's also drawn viewers back in after years after they decide to stop watching. Oh, but we got a trigger warning down here. Uh-oh, a trigger, a trigger warning. Got the finger. Things have gotten very dark in the girl world before with serious allegations of domestic violence, animal abuse, and drug and alcohol abuse. For the most part, things are lighthearted. But that always isn't the case. All right. So the ah. first person we're going to get a little. We got a summary of uh, the people that we listed here. And then in the future videos, Mary's going to teach us more in depth about each person. So the first person we got here is Amber Lynn Reed, right? Amber is a weight loss vlogger who has documented 11 years of failed diets plus size clothing hauls and new days. She built an audience who supported and cared for her and then lied to and disappointed that audience to the point of resentment. <laughs> there are many more serious allegations regarding Amber, including the neglect of her pets and abuse of her girlfriends. We can't play We can't play the audio because of the music, but uh, yeah, she's uh, that's been her weight loss journey right there. <laughs> wow. <laughs> she started that journey somewhere, but she ended up, she's, she's like close to Narnia or something, though. <laughs> she's like... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when I first found Amber, like when I was a little Am baby, I was fully rooting for her. And I feel like most people who stumble across Amber Lynn or even who see these kinds of videos that are criticizing Amber or talking about Amber in any way, they say like, well, what what is the issue? What is this terrible thing? She's just trying to do her best to better her health, which... Yeah, that's why I liked her in the beginning. That's why most people like her. She's funny and she's pretty and she's out there saying she wants to better herself and better her health. And everybody is really supportive of that. And then you find out that's not actually what she's doing. She self-sabotages a lot. She's there. There is, like I said in the earlier slide, a lot of more serious allegations about um, how she treats the people and animals in her life. Uh, but most people who see Amber in the beginning really do want, and even now I really do want what is best for Amber. So what you're saying is if we see anybody in the comments, that's trying to like be mad about it, then we know, we know they're new. We know they're new. You're like, you don't know yet. <laughs> you don't, you don't know what's going on. You don't know the story, which we don't know either. Well, that's why we're here to learn. All right. So the next person in the girl world is Chantel, the Feudy beauty. Chantel's channel began with the makeup tutorials and quickly moved to the world of mukbangs, story time, and vlogs. God, I have mukbangs. It's like the dumbest <laughs> trend, I guess. Was it even really a trend? It, wa it was. It yeah. Kind of. It, it's, it's its own genre, and it definitely became trendy and popular to do in about 2017. That's when it really picked up. Um, and now it's kind of out of style in the Western world. Like some people still do them. People make money from them still, but it's no longer trendy. I would say my opinion of mukbangs has always been, it has like an underlying like fetish. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, oh, it's yeah. almost like ASMR. Like, like, you know, people be like, I use ASMR to sleep. Yeah. But then like you got the ASMR videos where like, it's like a hot chick with like a microphone with an ear on it. And she's like, <laughs> I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, you're really you're just sleeping to that? Yeah, yeah okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It's sim similar veins for me looking at it. Um, yeah, mukbangs are just, people are just like, yeah. It's the, the feeders, you know, like, yeah, eat that. Yeah, yeah fatty, eat that food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Do it again next <laughs> right. week, too. <clears throat> <clears throat> Moving on. She is also a live streamer who has documented some of the most extreme self-humiliation that I personally have witnessed on YouTube. There is a lot of fart, shart, burp, and vomit content. <laughs> so she's kind of like uh, like the more realistic version of Nick Avocado then, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> right, with the burps and the sharks. And the <laughs> uh, I would say that with Nick, it seems more like an act. With Chantel, everything seems very genuine. All cards are laid on the table with, with Chantel. Now that I don't smell like a bag of farts anymore in a bologna and cheese sandwich. <laughs> oh my God, you guys. Hilarious. I don't know if that's good, if that's better or worse, Katie. I so we're we're going to get we're going to get to Nick, but you know how I felt about him already, even before like learning about this stuff. Oh, he's like a um like a character based off of all these people, but this, right. he's just gone too far. He's a method actor, you know. He's <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I guess we'll learn more about like this all this this stuff down here in a future future episode. Man, it's a uh, sounds pretty serious. Wow. Moving on to the next one. We got old Nick Avocado. 
God dang oh, it. Yeah, we know this guy. Yeah, we know, we know this one. Anyway, so old Nick began his YouTube career playing the violin and vlogging about his international romance with now husband Orlin. Made a lot of vegan content as both he and Orlin were dedicated to the lifestyle and had met one another in Facebook group for vegan men. Uh, in a vlog 2016, Nicholas denounced the vegan lifestyle after expressing his frustration that he was never vegan enough, which sounds like a vegan oh, problem, no. to keep everyone happy. <laughs> it's like, I'm eating this, this is vegan, and then someone's like, oh, but by the way, did you know that there's a ingredient in there that's not vegan that no one knows about? And everybody goes, what, what can I eat? Freeze, vegan police! He was also facing health issues that he believed could have been linked to his restrictive dieting. Nicholas began making mukbangs. He was one of the only American men to do so. His content became more and more extreme as the volume of food he consumed increased. So did his dramatic antics. Like the Nick Avocado is definitely a character, hundred percent. It's not. Oh, it's not yeah, him. yeah, yeah. It's at one thousand and ten percent a character, but a very. Like dangerous one. Plus, the feedback in his com uh, comments was negative. His views increased with each act of self humiliation. The lines between the real Nick and the character he created have become so blurred it's difficult to distinguish who's who. Recently, it seems he's on a healthier path. Back, back, um, well, last year, the year before last, I think Nick and um, Oompaville they were making videos together, and all of a sudden they even had like a podcast. And then uh, I'm, I, we made a video talking about it, and I was like, I was pointing out how like like Oompaville was getting all these views and all these subscribers <laughs> and then comparing it to Nick Avocado and he wasn't like really getting anything from it. He's getting a little bit, but it was like, like heavily in favor of Oompaville. Of one of Oompa, yeah. yeah. Because of the spectacle. And he was like, he was like becoming the person that you're watching Nick through. And, and uh, a short, short time after that, they stopped. I don't know, Dane, if I <laughs> caused something to happen <laughs> or what, but, uh, you know, <laughs> Wow. Well, there goes your collab with Nick. <laughs> right out the window, kid. Oh, man. Maybe maybe someone watched my video and went, you know what? He's right. Why am I not getting all the stuff from this? Why is he making all the money? You know, it's he's making. Oh, dude, that had, that had to be a conversation. I don't know. I don't know for sure. But you think it was? I, and I, I, wanna, I, I wish to be a fly on the wall. <laughs> it's, you know I mean? it's, it's definitely sus but again like, i don't i don't know anything to speak on maybe i don't know maybe they had a falling out maybe they just decided to go to separate i don't know anyway moving on to the next person we got hungry fat chick candy godiva what a name <laughs> or is it godiva like, i don't know what is godiva 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 that's how i pronounce These it pronounce it godiva yeah hungry fat chick though that should be like my <laughs> first name <laughs> 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 Hey, yo, guys, it's me, Hungry Fat Guys. Boy, hungry those kids. <laughs> <laughs> Always hungry. Stay hungry. All right, let's learn about her. Uh, Candy is a former adult fetish model who has created eating and other fetish content on the Internet since 2002. Her channel was created to be a food review channel, but was abandoned until mukbangs became main. Uh, all these people just did mukbangs. They were like, finally, it's my time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. After which she found her home within the niche. You know, it's it's also our time, Dane. You know, yeah, it's it's also our time. Like, uh, content creation has been moving more to like your PG uh, kind of stuff. Like, you still got that kind of crazy things that people go watch, but just in general, YouTube is uh, it looks like they're frowning on it. It just gets less and less views. Even stuff that we did, like we had that video to where like the, the husband wants to be breastfed by his wife. That video, as funny as it was, is just too much on that sexual side and it just doesn't yeah. do well anymore and like like people unsubscribe when you upload that stuff now like people that watch us yep. so yeah we just got to keep it we, get, we need to go back to what we used to do before we started having all these running series and just go find something that was funny and dumb on the internet and just laugh about it and then move on about our day <laughs> you know big ed I, everybody's people are done with big ed people are done with all this stuff and we, we just, it's our time dane it's our time it is <laughs> it really is and the internet you know what i'm saying like you were saying it's moving towards what we already do hence why we are the greatest YouTubers mm, to ever mm, do it. Mm, you know? yeah, we're the best. We're the best. <laughs> like, there's just so many people that are trying to do. I, I, I swear, on, on my on my Twitter, every time I look, it's just like some streamer that's doing something dumb to get attention constantly, yeah. and everyone's just getting sick of it. Man, it's just like, okay, tell me you saw the drama alert garbage like today. Today, <laughs> what, what happened today? Drama alert had the Island Boys. <sighs> Not the said boys. something about some brotherly love and they're just, like, they're just making out like a picture of them just making yeah, out yeah i saw that and like kick apologized for posting that 
and then said they fired their the person that does that job and then they made a joke yeah. later like still got the still got the password it was just a marketing thing it's just oh yeah yeah crazy anyway. dude <laughs> crazy uh yeah that's that is a big difference between candy and the other girls here is that candy has never hid the fact that she's a fetish model like she just if she's always done these kinds of videos nikocado clearly obviously and we'll go into more depth with that later is doing fetish work but he really wants it to not appear like that he really wants it to be like this is just comedy this is just all for the hahas and he he's he's got his only fans too you know yeah yeah he yeah right. he does <laughs> chantal she a lot of her stuff it's clearly fit like either for her own fetishes with the self-humiliation like some people are into humiliating themselves publicly and they get off on it or she's being paid by other people to self-humiliate like that online because it's it's not um it's not regular behavior <laughs> um and out of all of these people i personally cannot stand to watch chantelle or nick ever myself um i watch content regarding them through other people, like through the screen in the same way that a lot of people will watch TLC through the most handsome, best YouTubers in the world, Cinnamon Toast Cannon Buff Pro, they cannot stand to watch MILF Manor on their own. That's how I feel about watching <laughs> Chantel and Nick and Amber on occasion and Candy. I'm just not Candy's intended audience. You're welcome. All right. You're well, the, the way that you feel when you're watching <laughs> it by yourself, that's how we feel. And then we got to make it funny. So subscribe and like and do all the stuff because, all right, it's, it's, it's tiresome. <sighs> anyway, uh, let's keep on going. Uh, Hungry Fat Chick, we got uh, the next one here. After many more years of creating content revolving around eating food, she was ready to make a change for her health. She quit mukbangs briefly, <laughs> briefly, and lost a large portion of her audience. She began oh. a carnivore diet and began losing weight. That's the saddest part, man. Yeah, it's really sad. It is really, truly sad. That's like, this woman is uh, i believe she's in her late 40s i'm very very sorry oh. if that's incorrect um and she's getting to a point in her life where she seriously does need to make a change if she wants to have a longer life like realistically and she did make that change she went on admit it a pretty extreme diet carnivore is not something i would ever want to do myself um but it was working for her she was steadily losing weight and the audience that she built just completely bailed on her because they don't care about her health. They don't want what's best for her. They want to watch her eat. And that's the sad part. And that's why we keep making that this stuff. Very sad. Yeah, I mean, it's the same. Like people like make comparisons, like a like, thousand pound sisters, and like well, you get you guys are watching it and doing the same thing. And it's like, yeah, true. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Unfortunately, the positive change couldn't last. Candy chose to do mukbangs again in order to win back her audience. Unlike Amber and Chantel, Candy's views never wanted her to lose weight to focus on her health. Well, it's, yeah, I guess that's the that's the thing when you don't pretend that you're trying to do better and you make it you make it about the her formal you know job. Yeah. Candy is, in my opinion. This is Mary's opinion, so, you know, be mad at her, not me, no. <laughs> in our opinion, Candy is, in our opinion, the kindest the kindest of the girls, and perhaps does not truly fit into the girl world at all. She's never lied about who her content is aimed at, or why she is producing it. I've never heard of her being hateful or nasty to anyone at all. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. How would a wholesome finish there? Wow. Ready to go deeper? Next time on Mary Teach Us About the Girl World. Dun, dun, dun. Mary's worked really hard on these slides. Mary's been doing this for like days now. And I keep walking by and being like, you don't have to work that hard on it. You can just give me like a sheet with like bullet points and we'll just read it. You know, it's fine. It's, <laughs> but she's put a lot of work. She's got pictures, everything. Look at look at all this. She's got a little video. I love the videos. Yeah. She did a great job. Yeah. And she's got there's, there's the whole, I don't know, like two more videos worth of stuff. Yeah. Good job, Mary. Hooray. Have you learned a lot, Dane? Do you know more than you did before? Uh, first off, I didn't know the gore world existed, okay? <laughs> I didn't realize they were the new Marvel. And, uh, <laughs> they are the new I Marvel, like, yeah. <laughs> I feel like they're taking over. <laughs> and this is why we got to be aware. Yup, yup. But all right, that's it. Leave a comment. Let us know some more stuff that you want us to know. But like I said, we're going to go deeper into each individual person in the future. Mary's going to teach us all about this stuff and then more topics in the future as well so that you guys can all be happy that we're educated and know what we're talking about now instead of just laughing about it and making up 
stuff because we don't actually know who these people are. <laughs> but anyway, if today's your birthday, happy birthday. Say so toast to my friends. I love you. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Why do we care?